Hello and welcome to JCI Live, Austin, Texas, USA. My name is Craig Gandy and thank you for joining me this evening. Beautiful day here in Austin, Texas after our uh, flooding this past week. Uh, it's amazing. Rain has continued to come. Uh, everything's still green in Texas, Central Texas, and uh, God is good to us. Uh, it's been a nice year weather-wise. Uh, really nice. Uh, we um, Last week, I guess when the rains first started, I'm trying to think what night it was now, was the, uh, we had uh, got caught out, I guess it was Saturday night, and we're on um, driving through town and are driving and starting to go out in the country and uh, one of the roads was closed. But it was nice, the firemen had blocked off the road and were redirecting traffic and, you know, I sometimes think that our, you know, the firemen are, are so appreciative we're so appreciative to them for all they do, but uh, you know that was just another uh, good thing that they were doing uh, this past Saturday night. Uh, it's nice to and, and always friendly and always uh, you know such good people. So yeah, next time you see a fireman, thank them again for all they do. You know God is uh, so good to us all the time. It's so interesting to me as I meditate upon God and you know, on His presence. You know. The, he's wanting to release the light of His glory through those that love Him. You know, many years ago, I guess probably 20 plus years, uh, 20, 22, 24 years ago, there was a book released called Embraced by the Light. I can't remember who the author was, but it was a New Age book. It was a, wasn't a book that I would recommend, but it was first, one of the first times that I thought about Embraced by the Light. You know, to embrace the heart of God, to reach into His heart, to let His, the glory of God, come pressing through His heart into our heart as we reach in to hug Him tightly, as He pours His light into us to share with others. You know, we are to be those light bearers. We are to be those that, uh, you know, that God uses to share love, to share the light with to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ through. You know, when we receive the truth, it's hard to keep that truth bottled up. Well, you want to share it. You know, I love new Christians. Some people uh, don't. They think, oh, they're so enthusiastic. They're so on fire, you know. And wait till they spend a couple of years and get all, you know, warmed into the pews. And, uh, you know, we... Uh, uh, then they'll be okay, but there's just so much energy and so much fire in a new Christian. I love that. I love to see people that are excited once they hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, when you know what Jesus has done for us, when you know how He's touched our lives with the goodness, with the truth, with the love that He has for us and for His Father, you, know, it, you don't want to participate in anything else. You want to be where Jesus is. You want to be on the path that God has for us. And a lot of times as we follow hard after God, we experience challenges that uh, you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. But we know that God is with us. We know that He's using these challenges, these tests, to perfect us, to bring us into the reality of what Jesus suffered for us on the cross, because it wasn't an easy trip to the cross. And you know, here Jesus was a sinless man, the only begotten Son of God, and He dies on the cross so that we could enter into the presence of God the Father. He took such pain, such abuse. When I hear of the cat of nine tails, the, the whips that they used to beat Him, the uh, the crown of thorns, where these were thorns that were, you know, a full inch long being pressed into his forehead. When you realize the incredible pain that must have, he must have suffered just so that he could be that sacrifice for us, that sacrificial lamb that bought us entrance into the presence of God. We serve a Savior that is so wonderful, so beautiful, and so good that to get to know Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior will bless your life. It turns a heart that's hardened 
into a heart of compassion that you uh, sometimes wonder, uh, you know, Lord, am I, uh, am I too compassionate? The Lord told me one time, he says, there is no passion without compassion. You know, how can you say that you're compassion, compassionate if you have no passion? How can you say you're full of passion if there's no compassion? You know, the, to show compassion for others, to show love towards others, is what God calls us to do. We are to be the light bearers. We are to be those that walk the path that God has chosen to be an example to others of His goodness, His faithfulness, and His love. The Lord turned me to um, the Phil books today. Uh, they said, you know, these are feel-good books, but uh, these are the Phil books, uh, Philemon and Philippians. We'll start in Philemon in the Phil books. It says in Philemon, verse 4 to 7, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. When the Lord first turned me to that scripture years and years ago and brought it to understanding, to know that when we are brothers and sisters in Christ, when we have an encouraging word for them, you never know that, you know, a lot of times when you'll smile and ask someone how they're doing, they'll say fine and continue on. You know, but if you... If God prompts you to reach in, God prompts you to pause and say, are you really doing okay? And I had a pastor in our bookstore 25 years ago that we had a little Christian bookstore and this pastor would shop all the time. And I was in the back room engraving a Bible when God told me to go out and minister to somebody on the floor. So I went out and... Uh, I guess it was about 20 years ago. I went out and, and uh, um, you know, started looking through the store at who God was wanting me to talk to. And uh, I see this man with his back to me and knew this is who God wanted me to talk to. So I w walked up. I said, hello, are you, how are you? Are you finding everything okay? And he turned and I recognized him. He was a pastor in Central Texas area here. He says, yeah, I'm doing good. And I said, no, how are you really doing? He said, I'm doing good. And for the third time, I said, no, how are you really doing? He pauses. He says, well, my wife and I are going through a divorce. Don't love one another anymore. Um, this is, uh, I just know this is what God's wanting us to do. And I felt God speak to my spirit because I'm not a person that's, you know, I know people go through divorces. I've gone through a divorce. I'm not a judge or a jury about the, you know, people that have differences, but uh, I knew that God did not want this man to divorce his wife uh, because that's what he was prompting in my spirit. And I said, you know, I believe that the Lord is wanting you to continue to try. I said, I don't it's, I think it's about falling in or out of love. It's about honoring our commitment to God. You know, many times we all want to... Uh, take the easy way out, to not do, uh, not walk those hard paths. You know, it want everything rosy and cushiony underneath us when we walk. Sometimes those hard decisions are the ones that God wants us to make so that he can honor our commitment, our trust in him. You know, my wife and I have many times had disagreements, many times fought, but I know that if we had turned away from God, that it would have been so much tougher. If we had not had God in the center of our home, there would never have been any peace at all. When you bring God into your home, when you allow Him, to, when you lift your cares to Him, and allow Him to work things out, when you don't go to bed angry at one another, but go to bed lifting one another to God, it's amazing how much more peaceful your life is, 
how much better everything is. You know, when we encourage one another, when we refresh the hearts of one another, when we share love with one another, you know, God can be involved. God can do the things that for our good that he's able to do because we've submitted everything to him. God is good and he loves us and he loves it when we encourage one another. You know, this pastor, I don't know whatever, never saw him again. So maybe he went through with his divorce or didn't want to hear the words of, but you know, when you talk to somebody, share in love, not judgment. Uh, we're not here to judge each other's sins. And, and I can tell you what the Word of God says, but also know that God says that we're to show love to one another. The Word of God says you tell someone one time, you tell them twice. They don't, if they don't get it the second time, turn away because you're wasting your efforts. You know, there are many times we don't know at what stage to turn away. We don't know when we should press in and when we should back off. But all we can do is try to have our ears listening to the voice of God and He'll direct our paths always and He'll tell us what to say always. He says this in the Word. Book of Philippians, Philippians 1, 2. It says, Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are many people that preach that they're one and the same because the Holy Spirit is God, Jesus Christ is God, and God the Father, Yahweh, is God. Now, when they're all God, so you treat them all as God, but God the Father's taught, then His Son, and then the Holy Spirit, knowing that the Holy Spirit will always exalt the name of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ will always try to do the things He sees the Father do. You know, they're all, you know, but many people think that, uh, uh, and preach that God the Father, uh, sitting on the throne, decided mankind can't make it, it's time to get off the throne, come down to earth, put on the clothes of man, walk the, risk everything for 30 years, and then turn into the Holy Spirit. That's not truthful teaching. That's not teaching from the Word of God. The book of Philippians says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy. Every prayer, making requests with all joy. You know, that's a key right there. You know, we can lift our prayers to God, or we can knock on the throne room of God and say, Hello, Lord, here I am. Woe is me. Woe is everyone around me. I'm so sad. I'm so, you know, same as we are. You know, I'm sure God doesn't want to hear that whining, that crybaby attitude. We're to list our cares to Him with joy, with thanksgiving for being in His presence. Our life might, in the physical eyes, be horrible. But we know on a spiritual plane that if we have our eyes on God, if we keep our eyes focused on what would Jesus do in this situation? That we always have better answers than if we try to, uh, um, and we do it with joy. It says, List, lifting every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy, for your fellowship in the gospel for, from the very first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, he who began a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean that I got baptized, I got saved this morning, baptized this evening, and my life is perfect. Many times it's the other way around. You get baptized and saved and, uh, and the devil comes knocking the next day. That's what happened to me at the age of 12, 48 years ago. 
You know, I got baptized, or got saved on a Sunday morning, baptized on a Sunday night, and a little girl came knocking the next day. You know, the first time that the devil had approached me like that. And, but that's how quick the devil moves to attack us when we are submitting our lives to God. But all we do is keep focused, stay in our word, keep our prayers submitted to God, lift our cares to Him with joy. Hey, Dad, it's the way Mari or Jamie would talk to, to God or, or to me or, and say, you know, this is what, uh, you know, this is the concerns of my heart. Just thought I'd talk to you about them, lift up these cares to you. I know you all have everything worked out, and thank you. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And, uh, you know, it's like when our kids come to us, when they come to us with their arms around their neck and, and love us uh, and are filled with joy, they just capture us. Now, when they're sad or, or broken, we want to hold them and love them, and we're not, we don't push them away. But it's, it's easier to communicate. It's easier to, um, and it's the same with God, is that we sh there are broken times in all of our lives that we, God wants us to lift our cares to Him during these times. He is always that light, that love, that hears those cares. But we should always lift our cares with as much thanksgiving, with as much praise, with as much joy as we can find within ourselves to lift those prayers to God with. And it's not always easy. That's why sometimes people say the sacrifice of praise is because during our times of brokenness, it's sometimes hard to be praised, to sing praises, to speak praises to God. But if we do, if we can get outside of ourselves, if we can allow God to be God, if I can say, I know that I went through this brokenness, I know that I'm in this brokenness, I know that I'm broken, but when the time that I spend with God, I'm going to lift that care to Him, but I'm going to leave this brokenness. I'm not going to be broken during this period. This is my good time. I might spend 15 minutes or an hour with God, and this is my time of refreshing. These are the times that we know that God is operating in our life because He loves us. Then on in 2, 1 to 16. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, letting nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, when we allow ourselves to, um, to not be, um, to, when, we allow, when we humble ourselves before one another, to not exalt ourselves 
but to allow the humility of Christ to rule in us. When we look at all, everyone, that never judging, you know, knowing that without the grace of God, there go we. You know, I've seen people that were living on the streets or people that were in sin or people that uh, had made wrong choices. And we all could make those wrong choices that can land us in those situations without the grace of God being with us during those moments, those crucial moments of choice. You know, if we choose to walk with God, our path is going to sometimes be even more challenging. But we know that if we're on the right path, if we're following the light of God in everything we do. He goes on in 3, 7 to 8. Oh, we're we'll saying 12, 2, 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or have, or not, have not labored in vain. You know, when we... We know that we're in that wicked and perverse generation time now. Uh, you know, generations of, um, for 7,000, 6,000 years now, have been, there's been wickedness and perversion. And you know, when we know these things, and we see these things, you know, it saddened us. But they were, many times, were the exception of the day instead of the standard. You know, a lot of the um, wickedness that we see now is becoming more and more prevalent throughout the nations, and that's sad. But we also know these things have to occur. You know, God calls us to be the light bearers, and He says, In whom you shine as lights in the world, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. You know, we have that responsibility, not only to God, but to ourselves, as well as all the people in darkness out there. As you know, you'll sit in a room of people. You'll sometimes walk into a room, if you're a carrier of the light, you'll walk into a room and you will be overwhelmed with the darkness in the room. You can walk in and it's sometimes the heaviness in a room is so thick that you feel like you could cut it with a knife. Know that the majority of those people are sitting in darkness. And what we have a responsibility to do is to share joy, to let the light shine through us. If you can come in and you can change the atmosphere in a room simply by smiling, simply by having a carriage of light that shines through you, you change the atmosphere in the room. I've seen it happen so many times that, uh, um, and I continue to see it happen, where you walk in and you change the atmosphere. Where you, your sphere of influence is, your, can be as small as yourself, or your, you and your family, or friends, or people that you meet at the store, or, or at work, or whoever you touch in your walk become a part of your sphere of influence. And if you can share light, and love, and happiness, and joy, with these people, even if it's only for a 10-second blessing, know that you've made a difference in their lives, a difference in their day, that it could be a difference in, their, in them forever by simply a smile or a kind word, a word of encouragement to refresh the heart of the person you're encountering. Be that light bearer. In 378, day, but th what things were gained to me these I've counted as loss for Christ. 
Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. You know, there's many times that you, uh, you go through loss, seeking Christ, doing the things that God's called you to do. Uh, there are times that uh, the Word says you'll lose your, all your friends. The Word says you'll lose much of your family. You know, two will go one way, three will go another. Those are heartbreaking times when you do, when your children leave you or your wife divorces you or your husband divorces you, where you've lost your family or you've had your possessions all stolen or wiped out by a disaster or lost in storage or where you've lost every possession you own except for the clothes on your back. Then you know that in these times that what God says to do is to count all things loss for the excellent knowledge of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and yet count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in Him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. You know, as we trust God, as we seek Jesus, as we seek to walk like Jesus, know that the days ahead will be, continue to be good and will continue to get better. It says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You know, a lot of times the defeats of the past, the brokenness of the past can hold us bound in the past. But what we're to do is we're to remember these things but not focus on them. We're to focus on the days ahead, press forward into the days ahead, believe for the good and the great things of God for the days ahead. It's going to truly get exciting in the days ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Man, the upward call. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I press forward, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It says as we press forward into God, and God get calls us. It's like a, um, the upward call, the, um, the advancement, the um, come on up here and join us at the, for the upward call of those that are called. Upward call of God in Christ Jesus. How beautiful. Then in 4.1, it says, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, and whatever things are pure, 
Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if is there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You know, it says don't focus all your attention on all the negative, all the things that aren't of a good report. Focus your th thoughts, your heart, your meditations on the things that are good. Because what that does is that's helpful for one thing, but it brings you into a, a, a mindset of praise to God. And when we have thanksgiving and praise on our mind and on our heart, when we can get the thoughts of, oh, that person cut me off at the stop sign, you know, or I, you know, all the ugly things that we can think of, but instead if we can turn that to, ooh, that person just really ticked me off on the highway, to thank you, Lord, for my family, thank you, Lord, for my children, for my dog, my cats, and think, find the things to be thankful for, because then we're in a total different mindset, and God can be with us, and God can, will hear us more when we are full of praise and full of joy and full of thanksgiving. And finally in 13, 9, 13, let's see. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. And know in Philippians 4, 13, it's one thing that we've had our, our we raised our children to stand on, and that we know is that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And our God shall, 19, our God shall supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, when we lift everything to God, when we thank Him for our Savior, His Son Jesus, know that He's with us. When we have a a heart of thanksgiving, a mindset of praise and thanksgiving to God, filled with joy and filled with love. You know, the life's a lot better when we're angry and unforgiving and bitter, um, where we're just killing ourselves instead of embracing true life, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm glad you're with us tonight. We'll be back with some First Ghosts. Demario will be with me. God bless you.